here today to explain this Nike Tennis Classic Museum edition, and um, it's quite a special show because we have to explain the concept first, and it's the museum shoe because it's actually supposed to be a shoe like a, a retro throwback of now. So the thought of this shoe is actually the shoe our time actually being in the future, and um, we are looking back to a shoe that is released in 2012 and um, how it affected the culture or whatever. I mean, it might not actually affect the culture that much, but it's just the concept of the shoe. So uh, as you can see, the display case is in a beautiful kind of acrylic museum box, and um, the idea of it is supposed to be like it's being auctioned right now, so this shoe is actually a piece of art. So, there's a special thing next to this shoe, it's a tier zero shoe that's going to be sold at Juices, and um, one out of every five will be customized by the clock crew, like so either myself or some of the, uh, our other staff have actually followed a certain guideline to customize the shoe in a certain way, and the one in five shoe will actually be a little bit more special than the other ones, but I mean, I think that the shoe that you can get out of the four or five chances is actually not bad. So this shoe right here is the one that would be the four out of five, and it comes finished at first by the uh, Nike factories. And you can see right here, all these um, distress marks are actually from an actual kind of tennis standpoint, stand tennis point of view, because um, a tennis player will slide and grind these certain areas of the shoe, which is um, the first step of the process of the shoe, which is Nike's factories and you know the creative heads of Nike have completed for us. As you can see on the sole right here, there's already damage and distress and kind of work to it. And um, like I said, the tennis kind of work to the shoe. So the four out of five shoe comes in this box and it actually comes with a piece of charcoal paper. Now this charcoal paper is um, just charcoal paper. It's quite normal, but it's uh, certified by the clock for, for this Nike Museum edition shoe. So I'm going to have to start here and show you how I would personalize these shoes. I mean, there's there's many ways of what you can do. You can set them on fire. You can paint them. You can do whatever you like to them. Basically, all you will kind of need is this charcoal paper, and you know, you can be a little bit more innovative. We right here have. Uh, this is used to um, finish denim, actually, you know, to rock wash denim. So this kind of gives it an extra kind of element, but I don't expect you guys to all have these uh, rock things at home. So, I mean, it's a rock, so you can figure it out. You can get a rock and do the same thing. But um, first off, uh, to customize these shoes, I would suggest that you would take these laces off because these laces are uh, in the way of things. So I'm going to take this off. Sort of Alright, so the lace is off now. And um, if you were following the, the EDC method, actually I start from the tongue. So um, usually what I do with the tongue is I take some of this, this paper and I, I would rip off a little bit. Um, of course every shoe is a different size, I don't know what size of shoe you wear. But I think, you know, not to just kind of fit inside the palm of your hand is good um, for this stage. So um, literally you just have to apply this this chart, this, this this paper right here, and um, just basically start to grind. And you can kind of see, so right now it's really shiny and metallic, and uh, I guess Nike finished it exactly the way that we like it. And um, you just start kind of scratching away at it, and you start, start scratching away at it, and you start seeing the distress. So the distress kind of comes off. You know, you can go really harder and deeper and take more layers of it off, but you know, uh, everyone has their own kind of style and how they want it to look, so. Um, I think I, I, the, the one I like is a little bit more half and half, so I, I choose my spots to really stress the shoe and um, really make it kind of look old, destroyed, but still kind of new. Um, with this tongue right here, I think that the, the, you know, on the sides to make it look a little bit more distressed and a little bit more old and vintage, um, you just kind of have to you know, lightly go on the side sprayer. So, the, uh, I think the, actually the interesting part is this actual Nike, um, Nike tag right here. And um, right now it kind of looks a little bit beat up, but um, to make it kind of look, you just have to kind of have to push it, put it on, and then just drag it off a little bit. So, you can have fun with the tongue, you can play different things. Uh, 
it's quite self-explanatory. I think that the next part that I would do on the shoe is actually these these sides right here with uh, with the eyelets. So what I do is I actually wrap it around the shoe like this. I fold it on the shoe and I just kind of this one you gotta push a little harder, but I just kind of go in real deep and start trying to get it to fray. And uh, you know, not only do you have to make it on the sides, you have to make sure that these sides right here also get worn out so that they look, see as you can see, that it already looks a lot better. It looks more worn and vintage. So you just keep doing this around the whole side. The next step that I would go to is actually trying to um, fix the size of the shoes. Now, I would hold the shoe like this and kind of really get into it. Um, and, but be careful not to get into this Nike, Nike switch right here. So I guess this is the most kind of tedious part of it, whereas the rest of the shoe you can just go off at it and have fun. But this part you kind of have to make sure that your your papers, your sandpaper, doesn't cross the Nike line right here. So what I do is I would actually try to trace the the, the outline of the swish first, and then go deeper into the shoe after. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do right now is So now you can kind of see the shoe in the difference of uh, the unfinished version, which is this one right here, beside me of the shoe, and the so-called half-finished version. So the next part that I would actually go into is this front heel, and the front heel is easy, just go at it and destroy it. So, you're going. So the metallic finish is actually quite key to the design of this shoe because we can distress the shoe without you know losing the whole color and, and, and the parts that actually still stay actually seem quite uh, shiny and new so it's a it's a real kind of tripped out contrast of uh, old and new kind of retro because you know shiny shiny things always seem like they're, they're they're new and from the future so what we should start doing is this area right here this area with the back heel so this back heel area is the most hardest part to deal with, I think. Um, besides using the sandpaper, I think you should try to find another object and destroy it a little bit more. Um, but I'm going to show you what I do with this sandpaper. Just get another piece. And basically, this area is very hard to deal with. It's very durable. Nike did a very good job of making this part of the shoe. So um, I. The suggestions that I have is actually going around the rims of it and then on the Nike or the clot um, on the shoe ends. So you can go into this Nike thing right here and just go really deep and choose two or three spots to just go really, you know, rub it, rub it, rub it, rub it, keep sanding it down. And you can start to see that the, the logo starts to fray a little bit. And for this area right here, I suggest you kind of using a fold right, like this and going underneath this uh, sew line right here and just really digging it out and finding some spots to make it look a little less new and busting the seams a little bit. So this part actually is my favorite part really. Uh, it's fun and you can kind of see a good look of what your shoe can look like for yourself. Um, right here, as you can see on this shoe right here, Nike's already started to do some of the process that we would like them to have, or what the shoe would, we would like the shoe to look like. So, in order to get this kind of effect, basically the same thing as, as on the sides, uh, just wrap it around it. I think give it a couple kind of scrapes and see, just do a few. Just with a few scrapes, you can already see that it's already starting to deteriorate and kind of frick. So I like mine really busted and open. So I like to destroy it badly. Other than finishing this side, there's a few key steps that we haven't done yet. Is 
making these two eyelet sides looking more beat up and vintage. So the, the, the thing that we use here is this denim rock, rock wash. And um, like I said before, I don't think that all of you have this, but maybe you can find a rock on the street and I'm sure you can get the same result. Um, right now you can see that these uh, eyelet holes are quite shiny and new. Doesn't look used, doesn't look vintage. Suggest you get a rock, hold this, watch your hands, keep your gloves on, and just scrape the rock on it. Depending on how distressed you want it, as you can see, already the metal is getting scraped, the paint is coming off on the red, and the uh, metallic on the actual shoe right there is actually going to disappear as well. So you can see the difference right now, I mean, a rock and an unrocked one. As you see, this shoe is, you know, it's aesthetically it's nice, there's a message to it, but this is actually more customized and hand detailed. Um, this shoe is the museum shoe, and the clock creatives have really kind of thought about this shoe for a long time and has given it two levels to it. So um, there's only one part left in actually customizing and finishing the shoe, and um, that would only be for the one in five actual special edition that Clot has finished. So right now you can have a comparison of the two on an on a easy look of the differences in the shoe, the way that it actually feels and looks. So um, you can go deeper, you can go lighter. It's really customizable to your feeling, but usually when you get the one in five one, there's going to be a special added detail to the shoe. And that will be something that I'm going to take my gloves off for. And it will have a special clot tag, the tags that we always use on all of the clothing. Um, it will be placed with some glue, ghetto production style, right on this area of the shoe, approximately, of a clot finished museum edition. Nike Tennis Classic. Uh, everyone should have fun with the shoe. You can untouch it, you can touch it, you can, like I said, do whatever you want with it. You can set it on fire. I'm gonna get a pair and set them on fire and see what they look like um, after I finished it. So, you know, have fun and congratulations to the people that actually got the one in five because I actually spent a lot of time finishing a lot of shoes as well. So um, you can check online for the numbers and see what number I am and see if the one that you got that was finished was finished by me or who it was finished for. Uh, Love to the people that support us, Nike Tennis Classic Museum Edition Plot Juice, February 22nd, 2012. Enjoy.